Today's presentation is going to be about Eurocode 7, ASTO LRFD, and we're going to be discussing about allowable stress and ultimate limit state design methods. The outline is allowable stress design, Eurocode 7, and we're going to read some conclusions. We're also going to look at our uh, software program, DeepX, and we're going to include some advice on how you can handle unreasonable requirements. We're going to look at the allowable design methods, LRFD, load and resistance factor design, which is typically used in the US with mainly the ASTO design code for highway projects and bridge uh, projects. In Europe, they're using ultimate limit state design, which is supposed to simulate ultimate conditions before failure. When we have done traditionally allowable stress design, we've utilized safety factors of 0 0.6 to 0 0.66 allowable stress factors on the steel, and some engineers have used the overstress up to 33%. Whereas we have, when we have permanent structures, we're using 0.5 FY, where FY is the yield strength of the steel. For concrete, we take the bending and the shear capacity, and we use typically a safety factor of 1.5 for temporary structure and 2.0 for permanent. And we have similar allowable stress factors for the steel on ground anchors. When we look at the, the allowable design on the geotechnical side, we'll use a typical safety factor on presumptive bond values of 2.0. And on the wall embedment, we'll be looking for these safety factors of 1.5 in sliding, 1.3 rotational for embedded walls, and for cantilever above 1.5. And for basal heave, we'll be looking for something above 1.5. Also, hydraulic heave and applet will have to be checked. So looking at the deep excavation with water at minus 7.5 meters, with excavation at 12 with peg pressures, this will be the excavation here with a surcharge of 10 kPa. We have uh, the various layers, the water table, two levels of struts. This is a screenshot from our software DPEX. So when we optimize the model with the allowable stress design, we get a moment of 345 kilometer per meter and a wall embedment of 5.25, and that's the maximum reaction here. Then we're going to look at the same example with uh, Euro 7. Now, the main advantage of uh, the allowable stress design method is that there's a long history of successful projects designed with allowable stress design. It has never really, be, really been calibrated against failure. It's basically been calibrated against experience. On Eurocode 7, there's different states of failure that need to be examined. EQU for loss of equilibrium, STR for structural, GEO for geotechnical deformation of the ground where the strength of the soil is important, UPL, for uplift and HID for hydraulic heave. And I know we're going fast through this. Uh, so this presentation assumes that you know how some of these load combinations are utilized. But the idea is that we have different design approaches. There's factors, parcel factors from the actions, materials, and resistances. Different combinations include different factors. The material factors will basically be including reductions in the material properties and strengths of soils. And the resistances like passive pressures will be divided by basically a safety factor. While it is a more comprehensive approach over the American LRFD, the different design methods from Eurocode 7 can result in very different results. It's also very impractical to perform calculations by hand. And with all these different parcel factors, most practitioners will get confused. I mean, it took me like a couple of years to just realize what the Eurocode 7 founders had in mind. When we look at the parcel factors, there's permanent and variable actions, unfavorable and favorable. So unfavorable will be loads that are uh, pushing towards the excavation, for example. Earth loads will basically be dealt with uh, by multiplying the pressures towards excavation by 1.35, so they're treated as permanent. Where surcharges are considered as variable loads most of the time, especially like traffic loads, and when they will be unfavorable, they will get a factor of 1.5. On the M1 and M2 parameters, the idea is that we will change the friction angle and the tangent of the friction angle by 1.25. So we will have to bulk calculate the friction angle of the soil. And the bigger problem comes when we are having cohesion or undrained shear strength. Because on undrained shear strength, your code 7 on the M2 combination has a 1.4 safety factor. And this could be really problematic when you have soft clays. The weight density is not adjusted. And also, if we have the R2 or R3 resistance factors, those have a, the R2 factor has a 1.4 earth resistance factor. So when we look 
At the excavation with e EC7 DA1 combination, there's a 1.35 factor of parallel pressures. The moments of the wall increase about 164 to 164% of the serviceability state, but the brace reactions go up by about 35%. At the same time, the wall embedment increases to 6.5 meters total, which is a 24% increase versus the SLS case, our traditional way of designing things. When we look at combination two, design, design approach one combination two, similarly the moments increase by to 178% of the serviceability limit state, but the brace reactions are at 120%. And you'll see here that most of the bending moments happen actually under the base of the excavation. The required wall embedment also goes to 6.5 meters, and which is a 17% increase. Looking at combination DA2, where there's a 1.35 on apparent and 1.4 on favorable resistances, the moment goes up to 212% of SLS, while the brace reaction goes to 135%. And the required button only increases by 17% versus the SLS case. So when we look at these tables here, and this is just to illustrate one example, but if you actually run this a number of times, you will find out that this is a very common occurrence. You'll see that the moments actually with Eurocode 7 exhibited quite a large scatter over the SLS case. So typically on SLS cases we're designing for, uh, we will have designed for 150%, but the Eurocode case COVID combinations result in moments which are from 64 to 212% of the SLS case. The support reactions are actually much closer, and in fact, in some cases, are even smaller. And you'll see how is that possible? Well, it is possible based on how resistances and loads are considered. So what this is telling as a chart, and it has told that to me in other cases, is that when the Eurocode 7 authors proceeded, their main calibration was only against support reactions. They never really considered wall bending moments, so they tried to back calibrate their experience against support reactions versus moments. This kind of a design, if someone is not careful, might actually result in under-designing the supports and over-designing the wall. And we'll see how you can actually do a few things to make these things a little bit better and provide a more reasonable design. So EC7 has been calibrated mostly on conventional methods. But when we're looking at deep excavations, their performance depends on construction staging. So if we're not getting realistic displacement analysis or realistic response, will the EC7 results be valid for design? There are a couple of, of ways of modeling a nonlinear response with Eurocode 7. One approach would have been to adjust the KA, KPs, the effective cohesions, and then drain shear strength to produce an equivalent effect. However, the Eurocode 7 allows us to standardize the analysis by the unfavorable lateral earth pressure factor, which is 1.35, and then multiply that result at the end of the analysis to basically come back with an equivalent SLS approach or overall safety factor. And we think that when we're looking into nonlinear analysis, that is the best way. But in essence, this, this approach totally throws out the whole meaning of Eurocode 7. And if you ask me, Eurocode 7 is not appropriate for nonlinear analysis, if it is appropriate at all. So we talked about Eurocode 7 design approach 1. However, when we go to design approach, when we have the M2 factors, when we're reducing the shear strength of the soil, we might get totally unrealistic wall response with cantilever displacements in the initial stage of excavation being too big. And then combinations might totally produce bending shapes of the wall, which are totally unrealistic. So in my experience, M2 combinations will not work well compared to a allowable stress design, especially if we have softer clays. So another example of, a, of doing this would be of standardizing the analysis. If we have a load factor of 1.5 for permanent, 1.35 for the earth, we will have a 10 kPa load. We adjust the 10 kPa to 1.5 divided by 1.35. That's the equivalent load that we will run the analysis. We run the analysis with SLS, and at the end, we multiply times 1.35. Now, comparing again results 
with uh, different methods for another excavation. Again, we see well, now we all even have astral or load combinations in here. And we see that there is quite a large scatter and bending moments of the wall, but the reactions are much closer to the surface case. And now we'll see what happens when we have a soft clay. So let's say we have a soft clay with a two meter excavation, fill at 30 degrees with 19 kilonewtons per cubic meter. So that's a very, really soft clay. With the free air method, it will require 3.2 meters with a safety factor of 1.5. When we look at the SLS case, at the net loading diagram on the wall, this is what we'll have. We'll have positive 22 kPa on the passive side. But when we start applying Eurocode 7 combinations, you'll see that there is minimal resistance here because we're using the undrain shear strength. So the required wall embedment for DA1 combination 2 comes to 12.5 meters. And if we were to look at DA2, the net loading becomes negative here, so there is no real resistance, so this thing will be unstable. So if we were to believe this analysis, we will have to design some soil mixing wall expensive for a 1.8 meter excavation, which is totally unrealistic. Similarly, when we look at ASTO load combinations, 1A, ASTO becomes unstable on this shallow excavation, so there will be no way for us to stabilize this excavation whatever we did with traditional means, at least under these assumptions. So what we're getting at is that in Eurocode 7 cases and ASTO, but the particular Eurocode 7 cases, there's a great tendency to produce unrealistic results for wall bending, whereas support reactions generally tend to be better. We're now going to quickly focus and run a couple of examples and see what we can do with our software DPEX and how to handle some of these situations. And I'm going to change to metric units. Most of the time in the US, we're working with Imperial. We want to create an excavation and study all Eurocode 7 combinations. One of the way of doing that will be to use a model wizard. So we'll click on the model wizard. We'll select metric units. We'll run the analysis with limited equilibrium here. There's limited uh, elastoplastic uh, solutions. We'll use peck earth pressures, California trenching, and manual optimizations. We'll go on the dimension of the wall. We'll put a 15 meter excavation. We'll do some ground anchors. We'll put the water table at minus five. We'll change the spacing of the anchors at 1.8 meters. We can edit our soil layers. And here we can estimate properties from SPT test data. On clays, we have drained and undrained properties. So let's put 100 kPa here on this clay for the undrained shear strength. We can edit our soil layers. So I'm putting some layers here, like sands. And clays. We're going to select the wall section. So I'm clicking edit section data. And let's put the second file wall with reinforcement. We're going to put a 0 0.8 meter diameter wall at 1.2 horizontal spacing. Now I have US bar sizes here, but we could have metric bars. So I'm putting roughly, this will be like 12 numbered 25 millimeter bars with 9 centimeters. We're going to put some shear reinforcement at 15. This is our wall right now. And on the stages, we have a 15 meter excavation. That's what we have on the dimensions here. Uh, we can type in the exact elevations or depths. So I can put, we can put one tie back at 3 meters, another word 6.5, at 9.5, and let's say 12. We can put a strip load behind. The excavation, there's different methods of analysis for considering loads here, but it's not the topic of this presentation. And the idea here is that we're going to analyze all Eurocode 7 combinations. And we're changing the standards to Eurocode 2 and 3 for steel and concrete. We click OK. And we basically have our excavation here. What I will probably do initially is I would just want to optimize this excavation first, like for the SLS case, before we go and analyze all the combinations. 
So I would probably like increase, I will run this just by itself and see where we're landing before we do all these other combinations. So we look at the summary, there's some reds here that gives us some stress checks. Now obviously I haven't defined here bone strength for the uh, soils, haven't optimized the tiebacks, but I will be looking at the wall embedment, see that I'm getting adequate safety factors and that everything looks good. So we have this plate that acts like a hydraulic barrier. This will generally look good here. So we'll probably go with all the design and analyze all the load combinations all at once. The program has actually generated all the load combinations for Unicode 7 here on the left. And when we click on these design sections, these design sections are actually linked to the base SLS case. So now we can see the stress checks. Things are coming out in red on different combinations and we can see how much the moments vary and the support reactions, how they change here, the maximum support reactions. So obviously, when, you know, when we get to red, especially we see here that our wall embedment safety factors are not being met. Now, when we are looking at Eurocode 7, we have to target the safety factor of 1. So this means that we will have to increase our wall embedment in order to meet the required safety factors. But there are some, there are some tricks that can be used to basically produce more reasonable results. So when you're faced with situations like this where your reactions are like excessive, especially in a situation like that where you have a two factor on the, almost more than two safety factor on the reaction, you have to do something to reduce possibly pressures to like more realistic values. So if we double click, for example, all the cases we see here, we have a problem, first of all, that the wall is not stable. So our first task will be to say, okay, let's stabilize the wall. So we'll double click here and say, well, let's go and use a 22.5, for example, wall embedding. We'll run the analysis again. We see here all the Eurocode 7 combinations. And now we're just making sure that the wall embedment is adequate. And we see that's still a problem. So since that's still a problem, one of the things that we have to do is we have to inspect and see that we have, if we have a positive net loading diagram. And if you see here, our net loading diagram is actually negative. So whatever we do here, in this case, there's no way to stabilize this excavation under these assumptions. So what could you do from a calculation perspective? Because if we look at the base section here, that net loading diagram will be positive. See here, that net loading diagram here, it is positive. So the thing to do actually here will be, we have to somehow increase the passive resistance on the wall. And in order to do that, we will specify a percent of available soil friction. So we could reduce, and we can also include vertical adhesion on the resisting side, and possibly the driving side of the soils. Then we will double click, we'll go to advanced features, and on the vertical and adhesion, we might put 50%. And I know this is a little bit cheating with the, cheating the system, but sometimes you have to use those tricks of the trade in order to be able to get the design to work. So now that we're looking at our results and we're targeting for wall embedment, we see that our wall embedment right now is at 1.267 for the Eurocode 7 case. And we see that we're getting a net loading diagram, which is more reasonable. So we will run the analysis again for all the design sections. So we'll get the reactions from all the combinations. Now we'll have to obviously optimize the excavation, optimize the reinforcement and so on. And there's optimization tools right here. But the main trick here has been to utilize wall friction and vertical adhesion on the clays. Now this will be able to take you only up to a certain extent 
it might not be able to solve all the issues. Sometimes you might want to only include the resistance on the uh, wall friction or adhesion on the passive side. And if we want to use a different value on the driving side, we'll use zero. On the driving side, that's zero percent of the available soil friction. We can still use the vertical adhesion. And this will create different results. The other possibility will be to use some effective cohesion in materials, but there will be cases where you basically will have no practical solution if you use the M2 combination especially or any of these other combinations here. When the analysis is over, if you have any questions about which warning you're getting or what is critical, within the report tab, the program gives you warnings and you can click on those warnings and find out what are the uh, items that the program thinks are critical or possibly not designed properly. There will be warnings that are essential and warnings that are not critical. So if you look at the warnings here, we see, for example, the support structural capacity with recommendations. So we see all the different warnings. Similarly, here, we will also go into analysis on the multiple and generate, for example, um, Italian, British, German, French, Chinese standards, California trends. We also generate here, just for completeness, Aston RFD load combinations. So now we have, if we run a, one of the other combinations here, my Aston just for comparison. we can see how those results compare. When we are in the main program, we can see the envelope of all the bending moments. And this is the red line is the capacity of the wall. And we can also see the global envelope, which represents all the design sections that are considering the different load combinations. So at this point, I'd like to conclude with the main presentation of how you can use some of the tricks like adhesion and wall friction to produce more realistic results. There are other tricks of the trade, like adjusting your design method for wall bending and how the beam loads are calculated. But ideally, you don't want to be adjusting your method. You just want to use the other tricks of the trade where you can. Thanks to everyone for attending today. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Visit our websites in order to review more information about our software programs and services. If you wish to arrange a free online presentation with one of our experts, feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching this video.